there's been tons of not just OIG reports within um, dating back to 2022, as well as January of this year of CMP or of independent DBQs indicating fraud. Okay, and those two issues are also tied together. Um, Senator Warren's request to the VA set secretary, De Dennis McDonough, talking about inadequate CNP exams. Um, I kind of want to get your take on just the the inadequacy or the inaccuracy of of CNP exams in general. Like how how do veterans, um, generally speaking, feel about CNP examiners that you know to be blunt about it, they just suck. Right. You know, I, I this has always been a major point of contention for veterans. And quite frankly, even when the CNP exams were happening at the VA, to be honest with you, you're filing your claim, you're putting everything together, and then you feel some sort of resistance or pushback because the person is trying to figure out if you are or if you aren't, how bad it is, how bad it isn't. So so already the, the shields go up. And I think that it gets magnified in these contractor environments one because and and you said this before clay and i'm going to just take it from you look it's a government contract <laughs> mm -hmm. who's who who's the low bidder because we're trying to just get the you know the 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 most for our money right well who takes it in the shorts is us right as the veterans so uh, some of these places are quite shady um, and that's that's to put it lightly. I've heard horror stories. So have you. Um, and I think that that the problem is, is the accountability aspect of contracted CNP examiners is next to nil. And I will tell you that, look, if the VA can't get your claim right or do a lot of other things right, how the heck are they going to manage a contract? full of contractors that are running CNP exams that's so far removed that by the time you complain about it, which oftentimes, by the way, you don't, you complain about it, uh, you know, online to, to me, to yeah. play, to your brother, to your, whatever, right? You're not even complaining to the, to the contractor organization or the VA, but for those that actually do make it through, it's kind of on deaf ears a little bit. It's like, okay, it's an, we noted it. Now, that is important, though, because I ideally, if you get a decision that you disagree with, you're going to take it to the board and they're going to shuffle through everything and, and hopefully be able to, to get through there. My biggest thing, Clay, is we have to, it's, I guess it's twofold. One, we know what we're up against you should know kind of what you're up against fair or not doesn't matter right is it right is it wrong who cares you know you're dealing with maybe something that's not quite as user friendly as it should be therefore be extra prepared bring more documentation even more than what you feel you should have to that prove in your situation do more footwork up front take uh i, I want you to talk about this part clay what can the veteran do with many of these contracted CNP examiners to ensure that they have all of the correct history for your condition? I want you to talk about it because you do it so well. And uh, I think that that's an important piece here because it's all evidence, right? At the end of the day. It is. It is. Yeah. So I think, I think at some point we have to face reality. We can complain about CMP examiners all day, and guess what? Nothing changes, okay? And so now we're left with, all right, well, what does this actually mean to us, and what can we do about it? The answer is nothing, with the exception of really building that evidence-based claim, okay? Some would call it that a fully developed claim, which is the goal, but a private medical opinion, a private DBQ is not required so I would argue that, hey, you get as close to that line as possible with medical evidence or with evidence in general. And one of the main things I see veterans do is they misinterpret the word evidence, saying, well, I had a diagnosis from the VA. I was on medication. I was on treatment. I was on this. I did physical therapy, whatever that looks like for you, which is correct. It's all medical evidence, but it's not the whole picture you still need the in-service event 
the in-service event or the evidence from service, okay? Your time in service acts as the foundation for the nexus. And so it really comes down to, all right, I'm going to have a, a poor CNP exam. I need to build my claim with my evidence from service, with my current evidence, and present that to the examiner in a way that they cannot ignore medical evidence. In the event that they do, which it does happen, but not often, we have the appeals process with the higher level review, which is effective if and only if the veteran submits the evidence, meaning the big three, the in-service event and the current diagnosis. You know, I think the uh, in military planning, we have to make assumptions to continue planning. I'm sure we've all made assumptions in our military time. The assumption that I would make as uh, submitting my VA disability claim is I am going to get a poor CMP examiner. A CMP examiner that just, you know, isn't as good as others would be the nicest way to put it. And so with that assumption in mind, we have to submit our evidence-based claims, evidence referring to the big three, which is both current and evidence from service. But yeah, that, that, that's exactly how, how I would approach a CMP exam and then speak on my evidence, right? So the examiner will say, hey, Clay, tell me about your left knee. What I would not say, right? You'll find this on Facebook. But what I would not say is, oh, my left knee really affects my life. You know, I can't sleep. I can't do this. Um, it hurts when I walk, yada, yada, yada. Versus, right, that's option A. Option B is, hey, Hey, veteran, tell me about your left knee. Oh, I hurt my left knee in 2011. I did not complain about it because we don't complain about things in service. But in 2014, it bothered me more. Um, I have a one-liner complaint on my exit exam of knee pain. And since then, I went to the VA healthcare. I've done physical therapy. I got injections, whatever that looks like for you. And now with that conversation... Not only are you showing the examiner you have evidence um, of that knee condition, but it's evidence from service. It's your current evidence with the physical therapy and injection and, and all that stuff. And you're building the foundation of the nexus. That part is absolutely key there. But back to you, Jason. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and here's the thing is that when you receive your, I guess, invitation to your CNP exam, right? Sometimes you're going to get a packet in the mail or they'll, they may, they might email. I don't know. You'll get a packet in that packet. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they all work, right? I only know QTC. So, and in there gives you information. And then it says, Hey, tell us about XYZ. Don't leave it blank, fill it out and be intentional, right? What Clay's telling you here is hit your nexus, pinpoint your nexus. When did this first happen? When did this first occur? When did you first exhibit issues with whatever it is, right? Should be in your time in service. Um, if we're talking about a service connected condition versus a secondary, right? There's so much nuance that we could run down that a thousand different ways too. But primarily we're talking about in service connection for your primary condition. Now, you're also going to explain your signs, symptoms, durations, all of that type of stuff is in your schedule of ratings for that condition. Now, obviously, some of these things are going to have range of motion things, like if it's the knee or the back or what have you. But if it's migraines or GERD or that type of stuff, you're going to want to, be, to articulate how it affects you. And every single condition has its own criteria that the mm -hmm. VA is looking for for to assign ratings okay it's not one line covers them all it really affects my life that's nowhere in migraines that's nowhere in uh, now you can you can use that after you say everything else yeah it really affects my life because of all of these things that's in the schedule of ratings right 